thanks for tuning in to our webinar today, both myself and my partner, Simeon. Hello, family. We are so excited to be sitting with the two gentlemen with us today, Mr. Hunter Milborn, thanks for joining us, president of uh, Milborn Realty, as well as Maurice Wagger, president of Collect Dev. Thank you guys for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having us. Hunter, you've been in the condo industry and, and development in the city for such a long time. What's some changes you've seen in, in the marketplace of recent? You know, I think in the, in the early years in the business, you know, really there was not as much demand as there was supply. And so it was really a much bigger effort to, mm -hmm. to market and sell properties, no matter how good the location was or how good the sponsorship was. But, but today, because of the, the basic statistics of supply and demand, you know, the fundamental net in migration to the city of Toronto every year, both domestic and foreign, um, you know, we're really in a situation that is it's an undersupplied market. And when you couple that with the fact that uh, over 40% of all the new development in the last 10 years has been within 500 meters of a subway stop, um, it, just, it just emphasizes how important those subway locations are. You made mention about the, the, the population growth. I mean, we have approximately, the last numbers I saw from Immigration Canada are, are, are above now 125,000 people coming into the greater Toronto area year over year for the next 10 years. And so we hear it a lot, right? When someone's driving down the DVP or the Gardner and they see the cranes, like who's gonna be buying these condos? But as we all know, it's not, that's probably not the right question to ask. A couple ask. years too late, pal. Right, it's who's bought these condos because the construction financing won't even come into place for a developer unless you're close to 80% sold. Yeah. Um, to yourself, Maurice, let's talk about Collect Def. Um, for, for, for some of our listeners or viewers who haven't uh, seen or and or heard of Collect Dev, um, I really want to talk about its origin as well as um, how it's so unique because it definitely is in its design and innovation. Yeah, I mean, I think that the very fact that we are a new name in the industry gave us an opportunity to start using what we believe are best practices today. Notwithstanding being a new name as Collect Dev, we are really a subsidiary of Ship Lake Properties, Ship Lake having had a 60 year history in the GTA residential market and family owned and operated three generations. We take the inherent responsibility that we have as city builders and applying it to communities that will be real legacies for us and mm -hmm. for the communities within which we are building. What excited you about this area, 401 in Wilson, you know, a minute drive yeah. away from Yorkdale? Yeah, it's an incredible access location. We're on the Allen Road on the 401. Uh, we're on the Wilson subway station, so you're on a TTC subway line. And it really was a sort of forgotten subway station in many regards, right? It's, it's one of the areas in the core of the city right. that didn't have the type of pressures that a lot of other subway stops had, which you speak to. So that to us was, first of all, a tremendous opportunity. For me, what attracted me to this development, uh, and I remember the, the conversation a month ago when we started looking into it and everything else, I, I had a phone call uh, with Mr. Billboard, and uh, we were kind of looking at what makes a great product for, in this case, we're speaking mostly to investors. This isn't, uh, a, a two or three tower, 500 units in each one to kind of development. It's 13 stories, 350 units. Mm -hmm. So th this isn't a, a, a big, large development. This mm -hmm. is a development that's going to attract people who, who want to live. So they're going to have access to Wilson Subway Station, mm -hmm. which will take them downtown in 15 to 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. They're literally a two minute subway right away from Yorkdale. Arriving at Yorkdale, Yorkdale Station which is world-class shopping for the entire Greater Toronto Area. Right. Maybe one of the nicest malls in the country. For sure. You have the airport 10 minutes to the west, the 404 10 minutes to the east, the highway system, all access. Like, it's centrally located in the core. If you look at a, a map of the Greater Toronto Area, smack dab. Smack dab. Smack dab in the middle. middle right, right, and, and you'll win no matter what as an investor or an end user. And Hunter, I know you started downtown Toronto because that's kind of where the condo boom started, but 
Are you starting to see the same thing where values have risen outside of the downtown core? One of the senior economists of the big, one of the biggest banks, uh, Benjamin Tall from CIBC, you know, he's closing most of his speeches now. You know, if you think it's expensive now, just wait. Right. Because he is an economist and he really understands that supply and demand equation. But I, but I think the points we're discussing, I mean, the access, the sponsorship, you know, those are the key points that for a buyer. That's right. To, to want to, you know, they want to know that they're buying with somebody with credibility and reliability that's going to deliver, and that um, you know you can be in the middle of the city on a map and and have it difficult to get to somewhere too. But I mean, it's another thing to be in the middle and have all these easy access points to go to York, to go to Yorkdale, to go downtown to U of T. I mean, it's 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 really a very very strategic location. Who would be some of our tenants? What, what, what would they be looking for in terms of sizes, either a one bedroom, one bedroom plus den or two bedroom? Who fits that mold? This is a development that is actually pro-family, pro-living. Yeah. Like living the way you're supposed to live, mm -hmm. not in a box stuck inside. What do I do with my kid tonight? Yeah. Where do I put my dog? It's freezing outside. There are some features here that I would just love to hear sure. from, from the developers why you thought it was important and yeah. why I, for example, I'm so excited about it. We're doing, I'll call it, a lot of the conventional green initiatives, such as an improved cladding system and green roofs and within the suites. Our heating and cooling systems um, have ERVs, so energy recovery ventilators and those type of initiatives. What that does is Number one, it reduces our carbon footprint by about 70% from a conventional system, which is huge, huge. The actual energy consumption from this type of system is about 40% less than conventional boilers and cooling tower. And not having that cooling tower for your AC is also reducing over 50 million gallons of water consumption per year. That's so that huge. does, yeah, that, that does a number of things. I mean, first of all, we know we're doing the responsible thing in terms of how we're designing. So the investor who does buy this, you don't think he's gonna know that he owns a piece of something that's good for generations to come? And so innovative. Above and beyond just the money. Like, you can't just look at the one thing. Sure. Absolutely. This does empower people to change. Yeah. And I think yeah. this is going to become the change. And if we're so fortunate, I think in 20 years from now, this is not going to be something to sing praise to Maurice for. It'll be, thank you for leading the way. It's one of the many elements, as, as you saw, our, our entire marketing campaign is focused around. Scandinavian style living. And this is the type of technology that that's, that's that? used throughout. And it's a function of, you know, built form. It's a function of environmental stewardship, I'll call it. So there's a tremendous amount of outdoor space in this building. We have over 80, 85,000 square feet of green open space, landscaped open space. Part of it is going to be a public park, which we're building and it'll be ready for occupancy. Part of it is privately owned, publicly accessible space. And beyond that, I think that there's a big social sustainability aspect, right? And to me, social sustainability is thinking about how the end user is going to feel in the space and how that, that space is really being designed for who's coming in, for addressing like, listen, this is a microcosm within the bigger GTA housing issue that we're discussing, but it's the right approach. Really, it's about how the space is used. And, and that's the driver for us, is thinking about who is going to be coming to Wilson and, and how our building is going to be really the catalyst for what we know is going to be a tremendous amount of growth in the area, which we haven't gotten into at all. And Talking about the growth of the area, yeah. what is happening around the area here? One of the large, I think it's probably the largest land sale ever was the Downsview Airport, which was concluded to a uh, pension fund group. I think it was $830 million was the purchase price. And I'm sure there's going to be some residential there, but it's largely employment land. So I think that what you're going to end up with there is a lot of, a lot of employment, which is really going to be a very good thing for the city and for the neighborhood. Yeah, and they're mandating a lot of changes around that subway corridor, the Downsview subway. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we're at Wilson Heights. We're at the subway here. But literally the next stop over, which is Downsview, mm -hmm. uh, they're actually mandating 
how much zoning and density, they're really trying to get a density push there. So they want to see some new office towers. They want to see uh, specific milestones hit in a specific time, mm -hmm. which is going to grow housing and the demand for housing there is going to be obviously uh, very high. The combination of a, of a 60 year, three generation track record with a new and innovative company is a very unique collaboration. Like normally you get one or you get the other, you don't get both, right? So I think that's very important. And, um, and number two is, is, the, is what we're talking about in terms of the geothermal because it's more capital cost up front. So it's less margin for the developer, but it's really the right thing to do. And what's gonna happen is that five years, 10 years, 15 years from now, when someone looks at buying a resale and they compare building 30 with building 20, mm -hmm. um, and building 20 has much higher maintenance fees, you know, building 30 is gonna have a higher price because there's only Great. so much dollars to go around in terms of the carrying costs. And every dollar that's used up in maintenance is a dollar less for available for a mortgage or a down payment. Oh. Simeon, can you quickly touch on uh, the incentives that are being offered to our viewers and Absolutely. listeners. Absolutely. So uh, again, to, to close this off, uh, I think this is a AAA site. From a location standpoint, I think we have everything we could possibly want being literally meters from the subway. Uh, the incentives that we were able to negotiate, and this is obviously exclusive to our REC insiders, uh, and we, we strive to bring you these opportunities first. The ability to lease uh, the condominium during its occupancy period. Yeah. So fast forward a couple of years, uh, there's that gray period where the developer still owns the land, yep. it's substantially finished and you need to take possession. Mm -hmm. uh, we turn what's arguably the worst time to own a condo where you typically cannot rent it because it's not yours yep. uh, and you're putting money out of pocket yep. to the highest cash flowing period yep. of your condominium investment. Yep. Meaning you're gonna get market rent and you're only paying interest only during the occupancy period. Yep. So you're gonna have the ability to do that. We were able to get caps um, on development charges. As many of uh, our people know, because we bring you the latest news at all times, the development charges in Toronto have doubled or more in the last three years alone. I'm sure Maurice has felt that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not gonna get into yeah. it, but, but development charges have doubled and they're gonna to continue to escalate as, as, as we grow. Uh, your cap. So the agreement that you signed today is going to have a cap of $10,000 uh, $10, in development charges for one bedrooms, $12,000 for two bedrooms. You're going to have the ability to assign your unit at, uh, at, at close to, uh, it's, it's around $1,000 I believe, yeah. and this is something that yeah. typically costs anywhere between four and six thousand. Yep. So we were able to reduce the fees and the legal fees to that. Which is very important because as, as most of our insiders know, it was gen it was essentially sorry put into place an assignment clause in case financial hardship Over any happened. life changes life changes things happen but as a lot of investors know they were able to take advantage of the passive appreciation and actually flip it for profit right, right. and so that 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 you can obviously the the assignment clause it gives you the option either. to do that as well we always uh, strongly recommend of obviously we're buy and hold proponents yeah uh, but the, having the ability to assign is uh, a luxury that you can use to your own prerogative as an investor. So uh, above and beyond that, we obviously have first pricing. Um, we have an extended deposit structure, yes. uh, which makes this a very easy move to make. It's not so capital intensive. So uh, by all means, please uh, get back to us right away. We'll get you the full package. But most importantly, my two favorite incentives. Which are? The fact that REC will rent out <laughs> the unit for you for two years at no cost, as well as manage the unit so we take on all that headache so to speak um, and making this a full turnkey yeah. investment as always like, no matter what property uh, you, you you broker through our services you're always going to get the turnkey service yeah uh, but in this case you were able to double that yeah. uh, from the one year to the two year uh, b because of the the faith that we have in the location yeah. and the ease of uh, ease of getting it leased, so it's just something that we're not really concerned about because we know that we'll be able to take care of it because uh, there's going to be an influx of people wanting to live here. Amazing, gentlemen. I know how busy you guys are. Thank you so much for your time, Hunter. Our pleasure. Thank Maurice, you, Maurice. Thank, thank you so thank much, you. guys.